When I first started YouTube five years ago, this is the camera that I started with and I'm not planning on changing it anytime soon. If you're looking for a camera and you're just starting YouTube, watch this video. Hi guys, Luke here. So when I started YouTube five years ago, I started filming with a Canon 700D and I've been using it ever since. When choosing a camera to start a YouTube channel with, it becomes incredibly difficult with the wide selection and different budgets available. Not only is this camera cost effective, but I believe it is the most versatile camera available for small YouTubers. When you're looking to buy a camera, there are two main things that you should consider. Firstly, you should consider your budget. How much are you actually willing to fork out and spend on a piece of equipment? Considering that half of being a YouTuber is the visual storytelling, you need to invest a certain amount into that. Of course, you also need to invest into a good microphone. I use the Rode VideoMic Pro and I have done since I started. If you'd like a review on that piece of tech, let me know down below. Now, of course, the second thing that you should consider is the desired look. Each camera will give you a different depth of field and a different style. And I'm not just talking about Canon versus Nikon. I'm talking smartphones, I'm talking GoPros. Every single thing that you buy will give you a different look. But if you do choose to shoot on an iPhone instead of a Canon 700D or another DSLR, the video quality still holds up. The reason why I do choose to shoot on my Canon 700D more than my iPhone is just because of the depth of field. I feel like I can't achieve it as much with an iPhone 13. Of course, the iPhone 13 does also have the cinematic mode, which I use from time to time, but sometimes it doesn't really know what to focus on. The face tracking is pretty good, and as you can see, it does keep the background blurry, but you can achieve that look more realistically with a DSLR. Although I shoot on manual, and I highly recommend that you get familiar with any camera that you're using, you can shoot on automatic. The autofocus is also pretty good on this camera and I'm using it right now and it's able to track my face and keep me in focus. Changing the ISO and the shutter speed becomes really sort of second nature with this camera and you do quickly adapt. If you're sat there thinking, oh, well, I don't know a lot about cameras right now, you will learn through trial and error. Whenever you're recording, you can change the ISO and the shutter speed whilst you're recording. So I can do it right now. I can make it brighter or I can make it darker. Of course, understanding what those terms mean and actually navigating how to make them look good within a certain setting does take a bit of practice. By no means am I an expert before you all start commenting, oh, well, this shot isn't actually exposed correctly. But as you can tell from here, from my earlier video, Videos, I have learned a great deal. As I said in the beginning of this video, you also need to invest into a good microphone. The one downside about the Canon 700D, but then again, this is sort of commonplace with most DSLRs, is the inbuilt microphone isn't the best. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or even just vlogging for personal fun, you should invest in a microphone. So for context, I will show you what the inbuilt microphone sounds like compared to the Rode VideoMic Pro, which I am using right now. So I've unplugged the Rode VideoMic Pro, and I'm now using the onboard Canon microphone. As you can tell, it's definitely not as clear. Although I'm inside right now, and obviously there's no wind coming in, the second I am to step outside with the inbuilt microphone, you're gonna start picking up a lot of wind and background noise. Now, the reason why I would suggest a Canon 700D over shooting on your smartphone is because of the customizable option. As you progress and you start learning more about YouTube, and you maybe even start earning some money on YouTube, you're going to want to expand and buy more equipment. Now, of course, you can buy lenses and equipment for your smartphone so they become easier and more adaptable to film with, but you are able to buy more lenses and equipment for any DSLR camera. I can upgrade to any lens that I want in the future, but for now, the stock lens does exactly what I need it to. When I wanted to zoom in further, I can make it zoom in all the way to 55 millimeters, and as you can see, it still looks pretty good. Obviously, if you want some sort of zoom lens for zoom photography, then I don't recommend the stock lens and you would have to get a much bigger lens. When I first started YouTube, I had absolutely no idea about cameras or even how to make a shot look good. I've had to learn over several years of trial and error and by taking a film degree at Falmouth University. However, I think that at a price point of $449.99, this camera is a lot cheaper than some of the other ones you will find. All of that being said, if you do want to shoot on your iPhone when you're starting out YouTube, I highly recommend you check out this video that I've made. And if you're not yet subscribed, do hit the subscribe button down below because I make weekly videos on this sort of thing.